George Orwell was a police officer in Burma in the 30s. This is the first essay he ever wrote that was published. And he tells the story of following a prisoner to be hanged. At each step, his muscles slid neatly into place. The lock of hair on his scalp danced up and down. His feet printed themselves on the wet gravel. And once, in spite of the men who gripped him by each shoulder, stepped slightly aside to avoid a puddle on the path. It is curious, but until that moment, I had never realized what it means to destroy a healthy, conscious man. When I saw the prisoner step aside to avoid the puddle, I saw the mystery, the unspeakable wrongness of cutting a life short when it is in full tide. This man was not dying. He was alive just as we were alive. All the organs of his body were working, bowels digesting, food, skin renewing itself, nails growing, tissues forming, all toiling away in solemn foolery. His nails would still be growing when he stood on the drop, when he was falling through the air with a tenth of a second left to live. His eyes saw the yellow gravel and the gray walls, and his brain still remembered, foresaw, reasoned, reasoned even about puddles. He and we were a party of men walking together, seeing, hearing, feeling, understanding the same world. And in two minutes, with a sudden snap, one of us would be gone. One mind less, one world less. Yeah, first time I read that, I think I was about 23 years old. That was the first time I was exposed to someone's perspective of basically staring into a dead man, into what we're all the most terrified of. And George Orwell is able to articulate it so well. His hair growing, his nails growing, everything still regenerating itself, a perfectly working human body. And I had just never thought in such detail about the process of an execution. For some reason, it took me reading that essay to realize what a beautiful thing the human body is. It was part of his job to escort prisoners to the gallows. So he did that quite a few times. He chose to write about this particular experience. So they put the bag over the prisoner's head and he starts to chant, uh, chanting to his God, which is a Ram. And he just starts saying Ram over and over. And they hear it through the bag and it's just this muffled chanting to his God. And for some reason, the superintendent of the hanging just lets it go on um, for quite a while, quite a while, as in a few minutes. And George Orwell is sitting there thinking, <laughs> how many more chants are they gonna let this guy give? We looked at the last hooded man on the drop and listened to his cries, each cry another second of life. The same thought was in all our minds. Oh, kill him quickly, get it over, stop that abominable noise. Finally, the superintendent makes up his mind, gives a wave with his cane. The hangman pulls the lever, down he goes. There was a clanking noise and then silence. The prisoner vanished and the rope was twisting on itself. As part of the procedure, Orwell and the superintendent have to go behind the gallows, check on the body, make sure that the guy's not still alive. And the superintendent starts talking about how um, there's some executions that don't go so smoothly that this one went great, but a lot of times they're still alive. It doesn't kill them, and they're just dangling there. Victor Hugo writes about executions as well from his day, which was in the 1800s um, when they still used the guillotine, the big knife that drops down and decapitates people. And it's in the introduction of Diary of a Condemned Man which uh, was Hugo's first book. In the beginning, Hugo talks about how he had an apartment overlooking uh, the main square of the town where they used to do executions. And the prisoners would be there in the guillotine. And Hugo would just watch from his window as these people's heads were cut off right down there in the corner. And the crowd's just down there cheering. It's like watching a football game or something. Bring the kids, honey. There's an execution downtown today. Uh, I think they're going to have pretzels and some really good hot dogs. So, you know, it was just an event that people would watch. What a fucking horrible experience for the people <laughs> being executed. But that's just the way it was. Anyway, you know, it took a while to perfect the art of execution. But when they used to use the guillotine, Victor Hugo writes about how sometimes the, the blade would be not as sharp as it should have, and it would take more than one chop. He tells one particular story about one prisoner who, after two drops of the guillotine, 
his neck is about halfway cut through, but he's somehow able to get himself out of the guillotine and he runs into the crowd holding his head up like because his neck muscles have been severed. And there's just these horrible stories of inhumane executions. <sighs> this one went smooth though, but Orwell talks about how some of them don't go so smooth. And how, and then the last page here, he just goes on about the contrast of the mood immediately after the execution. So leading up to it, everybody's somber and it's just not a very pleasant scene, but um, as soon as it's over, they all walk back to the prison yard. An enormous relief had come upon us now that the job was done. One felt an impulse to sing, to break into a run, to laugh. And then they just start small talking. One guy is talking about his cigarette case. Like, oh, look at this new cigarette case I got for two rupees. Classy European style. Then everybody starts laughing. He says, I found that I was laughing quite loudly. Everyone was laughing. And then they go and have some whiskey. The superintendent has a bottle of whiskey in the car. So let's go drink this whiskey, guys. So that's what they do. They go out into the parking lot of the prison and just start taking shots. We all had a drink together native and European alike quite amicably. The dead man was a hundred yards away. So Orwell's laughing along with everybody else, but there's also this part of his mind that sees the absurdity of it all. And that's the part of him that was the writer. He talks about how much he hated that job, but as everyone has to do, well, at least most of us, um, we gotta do shit we don't like to do to uh, pay the bills. It's just an interesting experience that Orwell passed down to us. I've never seen a hanging, so it's probably the closest I'll ever have to experiencing what that's like. Not that, anyway, okay, that's all. I'm fucking done, bye.